um, Pesach Tov, Shabbat Shalom, Melkam Fasika, Sendet Salam. This is the Passover Shabbat for 2015, the date April 4th, the Saturday, April 4th. I mentioned this briefly in one of the other related videos for this Shabbat, for this Pesach, for the unleavened bread, for this um, Fasika Strong. Yeah, like that. The Fasika Strong. Of course, i.e. the Passover week. You know, we're speaking about the seven, you know, the seven days because this is a, this is a metasebia or a remembrance, a memorial of the sacrifice, right, of Yeshua HaMoshiach for I and I, for I and I souls, right? And for Israel in particular, right? But first the Jews and then the Gentiles, that's his word, not I and I's own, but it becomes I and I own in faith and imnet, in trust of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, an interesting thing is that the Psalm for today Right, the daily psalm, according to the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, the daily psalm for this day is um, Psalm 21. Now, as we double up on the psalms, according to the, the ancient Hebraic and the ancient Ethiopic psalms, you'll find that Psalm, for example, 21. Every psalm after 9 and 10 is where the psalms kind of double up. And this is something, you know, kind of ancient, you know, but it's kind of interesting, too. When um, we see that today's Psalm, 21st Psalm in the Hebrew Bibles, in the Hebrew Tehillim, and in the Mesmore Dawit, the Ethiopic um, Bibles would be the 22nd Psalm. So Psalm 21, that's named 21, is actually the 22nd um, Psalm. And so when we read like the 21st Psalm, we kind of double up. Right, we double up on the reading of them as well. Now, let me just check this out for myself for a moment. See if I have a, I have a script right here, a hard copy, and I do of the Metzhaf Kedus, right? The Metzhaf Kedus of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, right? He who sits on the throne now. Let me get to the Mesmora Dawit. Mesmora Dawit. So we turn to 20, 21st Psalm. We chanted the 20, we went through the 21st Psalm. It wasn't a full chant, but a kind of a reading and a, and a reasoning on. So, okay, actually, you could have Actually, Psalm 21 in the Hebrew and the Ethiopic old scriptures. The ancient manuscripts, Psalm 21 would be Psalm 20. I think I had said it the opposite way. So my bad, you could have nay. Um, I, I stand corrected right there and I'm correcting myself on that. That Psalm 21 in the old Hebrew and the Metzhaf Kedus of the line of the tribe of Judah, the book of the seven seals is like the ancient Hebraic scriptures, Psalm 21. It's actually Psalm 20, Mesmur Haya, which is 20 in the brackets is 21. That means that the proper um, Psalm 21 is actually what we know as Psalm 22, right? And now if you look at Psalm 22 and look at this season, you know, the season was the reason for the season that we're in, Pesach, you will see that the first verse, right? The first verse, the my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? These are the words that Yeshua HaMoshiach said upon the Mesk El Zaf, upon the cross tree, right? And many thought that he was speaking of Elijah. You know, they said, oh, he's calling on Elijah. Let's see if Elijah come. Because during the Passover, Pesach, there is a seat, it's called the chair of Elijah, which is um, kind of left empty, like a place for Elijah, for Elijah to show up at the Passover. And this is according to like 
you know, ancient Judaic and even in the Jewish tradition, this is still done during Pesach or Passover. So that corresponds between what Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, said on the cross, right, at that time and also elsewhere. It's my, um, my amen, in, in other words, I have faith and I trust, or you could say believe, some say belief, right, that Yeshua was chanting the Psalms, right? He was in a meditation that even in such an affliction, he was giving praises, giving praises while on the Mesk al Zaf. And now this brings us, right? This is the connection with the Lamb, right? Is Yeshua our Easter Lamb? Nah, nah. He is our Pesach, right? Seh, or the Seh Elohim the Lamb of God. Now, let's touch on this right here. So Psalm 21 in the ancient Hebraic and in the Ethiopic and the Ge'ez and the Metzhaf Kedus of the King of Kings manuscript is Psalm um, 22, All right? So the 21st Psalm in the Hebrew, right, is the 22nd Psalm in your Bibles, now, with that in mind, since we already went through Psalm 20, which is 21 in the Western Gentile Bibles, getting into now Psalm 22, let's go over this because this is a messianic psalm. This is what's known as a messianic psalm. And this particular psalm, you know, sometimes you read in the scriptures where it says that they, 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 I think after the Passover, they chanted a hymn, you know, said so that they sung a hymn together. They sung the Psalms because Psalm or Mesmor is found in the Ethiopic uh, word for disciple. A disciple is a Deca Mesmor and a Deca Mesamorit, right? Disciple. So it's interesting that a disciple is a, is a child of the Psalms or one whom the Psalms are rehearsed or refined in. The, the, the word Deca means almost to be pounded small, you know, like when you pound, if you ever see rock salt in other parts of the world, they get it from certain regions where it's just a one big slab. And so they have to break it down. They have to like pulverize it. Dekeke. Then we have the word in the good is dekika, like the dekika Israel is to say the children of, of Israel. So it's a very interesting kind of relationship. We can translate disciple in Amharic as a, a child of the Psalm, a child of the Psalms, interpreted as one who is, um, um, refined or refinement of the Psalms. Cause the idea of, of beating it is really to, is to, is to make it small, like, you know, like to make the salt fine, not, you know, like a sugar, you know, like these have sugar cubes. But the sugar cube may be too much, so you break it down until it's real fine and refined. So I think the word refined actually brings it to the fullness for those of us who are in in a, in a state of overstanding or seeking to get a good understanding to come to a inner standing and an overstanding based on the knowledge. Now, Psalm 122, right? Excuse me, Psalm 22. Right, Psalm two two, um, my godly, oh, indeed, yeah, um, cause we're at the altar of Aishans, mm -hmm. which is the altar of praise. But first, you have to come to the to the feet of the Moshiach. First, you have to be defeated, as such as a broken and a contrite heart, thou will not refuse. Mm -hmm. Some people say, I've been doing all this, Lord, that you wanted me such a. But th there's still something you're probably holding back. You see what I'm saying? And this is why sometimes, as David says, it's good that, uh, you know, I was afflicted. You know, that I learned to have regard for thy statutes. And what is a statute? Statute usually is the religious or ordinance, a order of worship of how do we worship him? Some people believe that we can worship our father in the covenant of Yeshua any way that we want to. That is a lie. That is lawless. And it says because the, the love of many would wax cold because lawlessness will abound. 
right? You know, they say, do what thou wilt shall be all of the law. Well, yes, it is all of the law. It is all of the law of sin and death, right? But we're not under that law. We are in the Torah of the spirit of Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? Amen, amen. So Psalm 22 is known as, if you look in the, we, we, we're going to use the Schofield Study Bible here, the Dek Amazamorit, the Rastafari disciples and disciples of the King of Kings in Christ. We utilize the, the Schofield as a basic, as a basic, um, a basic foundation for us, right? It says to the chief musician upon the word is I jaleth shaha, but there's no J sound. So that would be I jaleth, I jaleth shahar, I jaleth shahar. And it's a Psalm of David. Now, mind you, this is the Psalm for this first day today, the Saturday, the Sabbath day. Right, would be Nitzan 15 or Abib 15, which would actually be the first day of the unleavened bread, but it's the eve from the eve before. Right? So actually, it's kind of interesting. Actually, this is really, this is really in a sense the 14th, if you think about it, because the eve, this is Saturday. So this is the day of the 14th. If the Western Gentile was correct, then today would be the third. Just mind you, today would be the third, correctly speaking. So from the Hebrew perspective, we have to remember that the new day begins at what they call sunset, not at sunrise. Right. The sun worshipers, the, the physical sun worshipers, you know, the created thing sun worshipers. They believe the day begins at, they've been made to believe that, made to believe a lie. But what's, what's the subscription about right here? Cause we all are familiar with the, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Or we should be familiar with that because these are the words said on the cross tree, on the Mesk el Zaf. It was both a cross and it was a tree. We'll explain that y'all willing, um, a little bit more. Um, but let's go into this right here. Ayelet. Ayelet shahar mean the hind of the morning. The hind. A hind is like a, is like a kind of a deer or a, a roe. Now, what's interesting about the word ayelet, it's really chayelet, chayelet, ayelet, ayelet. We have ayelet. So it's like a deer. A deer is called a ayelet. In fact, you know, let's do this right here so we can show you, right? Show you how we, you know, come to, many of these overstandings from our study. So you too can study and know the truth for yourself. Don't have to just, um, I, I say, trust what I'm saying, but prove it for yourself. So let's go right here. Um, let's see how, how do they spell this right here? Okay. It's a, they spell it a I a a I J right. A I J E L E T H. And hopefully We'll have that, okay, one time, okay, one time, let's see right here, here we go right here, one time is 22 and one, and let's bring this up right here, okay, here's Psalm 22, we're using the word um, software, right, and you can find that, download it free um, for yourself, okay, it says, David complains in great discouragement, now this, you have to remember, this is those that bold black right there is what the translators put there so that people can have a better understanding of it. But what is really found is this first. Now, it's interesting because this first verse right here is found. Right? There's a subscription to the chief musician upon Ayelet. Right? Okay, that's that skipped right there. Let's bring it up again. Ayelet. Let's take this one key word. Ayelet is a doe or a hind. Right. So you see this down here. Ayelet. Let's um click on this right here. Ayelet. Ayala. Right. They say it's a female, a female deer, though a deer, a female deer. Now, people say, what does that have to do with it? Well, let's go to the male. It's Ayal. Right. Ayal is the ancient Chayil. Chayil, a stag, a male deer. Right. Now, as we go on further, you see this right here. In fact, Let's do this like this right here. Let us, um, 
how can we go back a couple of words right here? Let's bring this up and let's make this full screen right here. Right. So this is the key word right here. This is the subscription. Ayelet. We're going to prove that Ayelet is the Hebrew of Chayel, of Chayele, Ayelet. Same word, royal order, Ethiopian Hebrew. So they both bear witness to the same truth. Right. So we have 355. We go to 355. We have Ayala. Right. Ayala. Right. A doe or a female deer. The H30. Uh, the H354, 354, is Ayal. Ayal is a stag, right? A male deer, right? Intensive form of the H352. So what is it? So it says right here, what says in the sense of what? Ram. In the sense of a ram, right? Remember, we're speaking about the, the, the symbolic types, right? The symbolic types found in Pesach found in Passover and in the Hebrew mystery or the mystery, or you can say the Hebraic mythology that is fulfilled in reality, right? So we go right here and we look at this root word right here and let's click on it. Boom. There you go right there. Ayel. Ayel. Ayele in them hark means strong, to be overpowered. Ayele and chayele. Ayele, Chayele, same word, which is at the root of Chayel, El, Chayla, Selassie, that name, the power, the strength, anything or anyone strong. It says uh, specifically, politically, a chief, right? It says the fourth one is also a ram. So the root of this is the strength. So it says, um, it says to chief musician upon Ayelet, Ayelet Shahar. Now, Ayelet Shahar, some say, is a title and not a musical instrument. Sometimes you'll find to the chief musician upon this or that musical instrument. Here they say that this is a title, right, and not a musical instrument, right? So this is a, a context here. Now, Shahar means morning. Shahar means the morning. Ayelet, right, the female strength, right, of the morning or the power Right in its manifest st sense, you know. Well, we'll we'll touch on that. It's like the the moon. The moon is feminine, but it is reflecting the light of the soul of the sun. You see, which is the masculine. You over so here at the root of it, we have Ayala, We have the ram connection. We have the um pilaster, like a strong support. We also have the oak or another strong tree. Now, if you notice right down here at the bottom, it says mighty in the sense of a mighty man, a powerful man, chayel, chaylenya, right? A lintel, remember the lintel? The lintel are, the, the posts of the lintel are struck, right? During the Passover, let's bring this up right here. The posts of the, of the house are struck. And we have this right here, which is that pie, the che, that pie, Right, right there above the house, you know, the, the, um, the blood on the doorpost. Let's put it like that. Right. Which actually in its fullness is the heart, the lamb without blemish, the tamim, right? Tamim, no blemish, perfect in that sense. Um, the precious blood, the blood, liberty, life of the Moshiach as the lamb without blemish and without spot right here. Right. And there's a kind of an interesting connection, right? When we look even in the Chinese word for blood, right? Is a picture of a nail used for piercing and altar and blood flowing at the side of the altar. So you see, this is universal, but it was given to Israel as a, um, it was given to Israel specifically. Right. To be that light amongst the Gentiles. So if we have darkness in the world, we have to look at Israel, too. You know, what I mean, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This would explain to black folks when they say, why, you know, you know, why, why, why? This explains the why, why, why? When you know who you are. Right. And you know who is your savior in spirit and in truth. But let's go into this a little bit more right here. So you can see how it has the word uh the other words associated, oak, tree, or post, ram, so forth and so on. All right. Now that is just from that one key word right there, 
that is explaining the context, the shahar, and you have shahar is the dawn. You see this right here? It's the dawn. It's either the dawn in a literal sense or the dawn in a figurative sense or the dawn in an adverbial sense. And the King James Bible is translated as day in a sense of day, spring, early, the early light, the early morning, whence it riseth. Now, this is the context of this prophetic psalm here, which is a messianic psalm. Now, what many people don't understand or, or have not put together, and the Schofield here gives a good um, enlightenment to this right here, is that um, Psalms 22, 23, and 24 they form a trilogy, a trinity, a salasi, a trinity, right? In Psalm 22, right, which is the proper psalm for this time and especially this day and this season, it's the good shepherd that gives his life for the sheep. This is what Yeshua said in John 10 and 11, the good shepherd. In Psalm 23, we have the great shepherd. Right. We have the great shepherd in um, in Psalm 23, who is brought again from the dead through the blood of the eternal covenant. Now, in an inspired kind of a sibket, a Devar Torah or Devar, you know, of Pesach, we had touched on Hebrews, the epistle of Hebrews, chapter 13. And this is one of the verses that we also focused on here where it says that the great shepherd, he brought again from the dead, he's brought again from the dead through the blood, the liberty of the eternal Kalakidan, word, sound, and power, and he tenderly cares for the sheep, right? So we're actually speaking of um, kind of two aspects, the, the, the risen, right, the sacrifice Yeshua, and the risen Yeshua. Right. The sacrifice Yeshua. Right. And the risen Yeshua, when we're speaking of the good shepherd, is the one who lays down his life for the sheep. Right. And the great shepherd. Right. Is the one who was raised again after the crucifixion, the death, the burial, the uh, resurrection and before the ascension. Right. The great shepherd was shown to them. He said, behold, right? And we, we know the, the, the gospel, you know, where many, even doubting Thomas, where, where Thomas was doubting. And he says, well, I doubted you, Thomas, you know? And that's like a lot of us. If we, if we can be honest, <laughs> you know, like Johannes, you know, that's like a lot of us. All right. But let's go forward right here. Um, then we have Psalm 24. So we have a trilogy here, a trinity of Psalms that begins with Psalm 22, right? So when we say that David was, uh, David was a prophet, you know, a lot of ones say just David was a king. David was a sweet singer of Israel. Yeah, all of that. But he also was a prophet. Mm -hmm. He prophesied concerning the Moshiach and he also prophesied concerning Ethiopia. Mm hmm. Isn't it interesting that David had a Bathsheba and King Solomon had a Queen of Sheba? There's something about the Sheba. And then we know that Sheba, Shiva, also refers to seven, and seven refers to, to a vow, a covenant, or an oath, right? An oath, a Shiva, a, a Sheba, right? A Sheba, right? But now in Psalm 24, we have the chief shepherd, right? We have the chief shepherd. Not just the the good shepherd, right? And not just the great shepherd, but now we have the chief shepherd. He appears in the latter day and times, he appears as king of glory, right? As king of the kavod, right? As malekha kavod, right? Um, as king of the glory to own and reward the sheep. You see what I'm saying? The king of kings owns I and I. You know, Kedemar Hadislasi, he owns I and I, right? In Yeshua and through Yeshua, because he is that chief shepherd that appears as Me Melech in the Hebrew, 
you know, Melchizedek, Melchizedek, as that great Melchizedek, king of righteousness. Now, what is, or rather, a better question, or a better way of asking the question is, who is the righteousness of, of Kedemar Wihala Selassie? I and I am black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach, who is the good shepherd, the good shepherd laying down his life for the sheep, right? Who is the great shepherd, right? Raised again from the dead, right? For our, our justification, our righteous man, right? And we have the chief shepherd, right? Now remember that word chief? You remember Ayelet? Remember Ayel, Ayel? In the Hebrew that we just touched on in the earlier part of the video from, from the, from the subscription of this psalm, Ayelet Shahar, it meant what? Chief. Didn't it say chief right there? Let's just bring that up in case one's, you know, maybe this is, this is a lot going on right here and you have to watch it again. But look right here. Here we go right here. Chief. All right. You see that right there? Chief. And this is from this root, Ayel, which is Chayel. Ayel, Chayel. Same word, ayele. And when you contract this word right here is where we get the Hebrew el. When we say el, as an el, as an elohim. That's why it means power or the powers as one. And speaking of those seven eyes and those seven horns, right? Those seven eyes and those seven horns, the power, right? Elohim as one, right? And the root is the el or the chayel. And when you contract this is where we get the Hebrew el. But if you notice this right here, the fourth one, it says specifically, notice what they have right there. This is Strong's, right? Strong's concordance. Specifically, politically, a chief. Boom. Gotcha, Satan. Trample you. You know, you over all the lies and slander against the king of kings. He is politically, right, that chief. Mm hmm. <laughs> The lily of the valley. You know what I mean? Yes, he's that chief, right? The chief shepherd, he appears. Notice the key word. He appears as king of glory to own and reward the sheep. Not the goats, but the sheep, right? We are the lost black sheep of the house of Israel. First Peter 5 and 4 goes into a little more detail, but Let's get into a kind of a messianic. This is a messianic song. Before we even get into the verse by verse, the, 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 the notes that we have here are very, very important. The notes that we have here in the Schofield, uh, first Schofield study Bible and those who have a copy, um, please check it out with I and those who don't listen up. And I think there's a PDF that ones can utilize or ones can get the specific, um, order the specific one from RTG or through one of those resources there from like Amazon or, or whatnot. Right. But let's get into this right here. Psalm 22. Right. What about Psalm 22? Right. What about Psalm 22? What about Psalm 22? Well, Psalm 22 is a graphic picture of death by crucifixion, right? Psalm 22 is a, let's bring this forward right here, right? Psalm 22 is a graphic picture, right? That's right here. It's a graphic picture of death by crucifixion. And let's show you some of these stills right here. A, a graphic picture of death by crucifixion. The bones, and we're speaking about the bones of the hands, the arms, the shoulders, the pelvis, are out of joint. Now, here's what's kind of interesting too. Very interesting. When you look at all the number of the law, statutes, uh, commandments that are in Torah, the fullness of it, besides the, the Decalogue is not the Ten Commands, it's one commandment. It has 10 words. It's known as the 10 words, the Asruk Alat, the Decalogue. But be that as it may be, if you count all of them, it comes up to 613. There's some who say 614. I like them to show, well, what is that 14th? You know, what's, what's the next one? But anyway, we know the 613. And there's a reason also for that as well, that hopefully we'll get into that particular, that particular um, number there. Right? But we have 613 laws, statutes, and commandments 
in Moses' Torah, right? And 248, if I'm correct, 248 is the members of the body and the 360, is it 360, 365? I think re relates to the veins and to the, um, but when you break it down, I'm going to get into the detail of that. There's a lot that I want to share here, but I'm trying to go through it a little by little right here. The 613 relates to the body of man, you know, the, the law, statutes, and commandments. So when we think about Yeshua, ha Adon, Adonai, and his bones, the bones of his hands, arms, shoulders, and pelvis out of joint, right? This is what's in verse 14. When we think about the profuse perspiration caused by intense suffering, verse 14. And, 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 and I submit to you that the intense suffering, we might think that it was mainly because of, you know, the physical pain. I say that it was the broken heart of the Moshiach, right? It's the broken heart of the Moshiach that was actually so much more, you know, the pain that our our Savior, that Adonai, suffered, especially on behalf of he came to his own and his own received him not. And what that th what they would experience, and we can go through Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68 over and over, but that's because of rejection of the Moshiach, plain and simple, right? The action of the heart was also affected, right? The action of the heart. Strength was exhausted. Extreme thirst. We have that in verse 15. The hands and the feet are pierced in verse 16 of Psalm 22. Partial nudity. Um, I think that it was actually full nudity. I don't think the Romans had any qualms about that. You know, they, they were roughneck people and everything. And in some of the ancient um, iconography actually showed Yeshua you know, I mean, basically being, you know, strip, 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 butt naked, you know, but in the pictures, they put that there for some sense of modesty, so forth and so on. You know how those who, um, it says Adam and Eve was naked and no shame, but people put that there, you know, but so here it says partial nudity. I, I say that it was complete nudity, right? And wounded nudity at that, right? With the hurt to modesty, verse 17 are all incidental to that mode of death. So when we look at all the kind of modes of death that would cause this, you understand that truly even this was prophetic as well. So we have prophetic on top of prophetic elements right here, right? The accompanying circumstances are precisely those that are fulfilled in the crucifixion of HaMoshiach. So the other circumstances, so people say, oh, that's a coincidence. There's too many coincidences for it to be all coincidental. See, co mean two. If it was just two here, one over here, or something like, okay, maybe. But there's too many of them. Every verse, uh, over and over, you get to see more details. Now, there's the desolate cry, right, of verse 1. That's in Matthew chapter 27 and 46. The Elohe, Elohe, Lama, Sabak, Tani. My God, my power, my power, why has thou forsaken me? Right? There's the periods of light and darkness of verse two. Right? We have that in the verse before, um, Matthew chapter 27 and 45. Right? The contumely of verses, like there's a whole series of, um, of verses where it's like the contumely is like, the slander, you know, I said, you saved others, you me, I didn't know, you know, so save yourself, you know what I mean? And just all the, you know, they laugh me to scorn, they shoot out the lip, they shake the head, you know, um, just imagine being in that sort of a position. And that's what we do imagine, not that we are doing it for him, but what he has done for us so that we can learn at, in heart to be grateful and to receive this free gift of Medan, of Yeshua, of Teshuva, of salvation, right? So there are those verses as well. There's the casting of lots where the, where the people were gambling. You know what I mean? While while he was suffering, there's ones down there gambling, mainly the Romans, but still ones were gambling, 
right? It's like when Rome burnt, they said Nero was playing, you know, craps or something like that. But in Matthew 20, 27 and 35, you find that all of these were literally fulfilled. And this just to name a few. We're just naming a few of the main, you know, the main points that naysayers find it hard to say nay, but they still say nay anyway. But who care what they say? We follow Yahweh and truth and life. And we see truly this is fulfilled. When it is remembered that crucifixion was Roman. See, crucifixion. Sorry about the little earthquake right there. <laughs> crucifixion was Roman, right? You know, was a, was a kind of a Roman, um, ting. Right, crucifixion was Roman, and then we have a little piece of this over here. Crucifixion was Roman. When we remember that crucifixion was a Roman, it was not Hebrew, it was not Hebraic, right? Um, even other cultures, they didn't go through. Yeah, they may have tortured and killed people, but this was a uniquely what's being described in the Psalms were unique was uniquely fulfilled by both what happened to the Moshiach. Right. As well as who did it, who crucified Yeshua. The Jews wanted him dead, but they couldn't do it. They didn't have no power. Right. The Romans had to do it because they were the one. The Gentiles were already beginning. This is like the rise of white supremacy, too. If you if you can if you can receive, it. though, it was not full blown like the Anglo-Europeans and the Anglo-Americans, you know, but that would not happen to the end of the age. Right. Um, remember that crucifixion was a Roman, not a Hebraic or a Jewish form of execution. When we remember that, then we will recognize that the proof of the inspiration for those who can receive it within the innermost of the innocents is irresistible, right? Is irresistible concerning this Psalm 22, which is a, um, messianic Right, which is a messianic song. Now, when we get to verse, um, you know, it's interesting because verse 22 says, I will declare thy name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation, the Machiber, the society of his majesty. Will I praise, will I Isis thee, Yeshua? Right now, the footnote here says at verse 22, the psalm breaks. There's a break in the tone, the tenor, and what's being spoken of from crucifixion to resurrection. So it breaks from the suffering of crucifixion to the resurrection fulfilled in the go to my brethren, go to I and I brethren, share this message with I and I Rastafari brethren. John 20 and 17. Right, John 20 and 17, whether Jew or Gentile, all are part of the church of the firstborn, according to the will of I and I, Abba and Father. So go, you know, and go to I, brethren, go to the brethren, the Wendemoch, the risen Moshiach, the risen Christos, the risen Christ declares to his brethren the name. Now, what name does he declare? What is the name that he declares? He declares Abba. He declares the name of the Father. And the name of the Father is Father, is Abba. That is the name that he has declared. Now you have to just meditate that for a moment, right? He declares, let me just bring this one up right here. Nagu Selassie. He declares the name. You know, yes, he is the irator. He is the creator. But for us, even more so, he is I and I, Abba, Father, because of the nearness of relationship and even the sonship, right? The adoption as sons and daughters that we have in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach. This is why Pesach, this is why Fasika is so important from the old, right? The old covenant straight into the new covenant, right? Even in the King of Kings, through I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now there's a little footnote down here, right? In verse 30, where it says, a seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to Adonai. It shall be accounted to Adonai, 
And it actually says this in the footnote right here. Adonai for a generation. Because this is the generation that seeks his face. Even the God of Yaakov. Even the Hayyam. The power. The strength. Here it speaks about the kingdom being Yahweh's. The kingdom being he who be who he be. In verse 30, Adonai is in view as ruling on behalf of Yahweh. Now we can see Psalm um, Psalm 110, which is also the coronation psalm, like 110. Also Matthew 22, verses 42 to 45. The great end and object of the rule of Adonai, the Lord, is the restoration, restoring the kingdom, the government to Yahweh, to his father, our father, restoring the government to he who be who he be, his divine majesty. That is the whole fullness. Thy kingdom come. All right. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. What? On earth as it is in heaven. Behold his witness in the stars. Yes, sir. Every true Rastafari son or daughter is a star. You know, he says so. And he wrote it. See it there. See it over there. Right? Abba Daddy Dede. Right? All right. Shalom. Rastafari. More to come, brothers and sisters. If the eye get the chance, um, seek to download this right here. Um, you know, the worthy is the lamb. You know, check it out more for thyself. Right? And here we go right here. Just to get that right there. Ishi Shalom Ras Tefari. Pesach, uh, Pesach Tov, uh, Shabbat Shalom, Malkam, Fasika, Senbet Salam. Yeshua Shalom.